Welcome to RoboSquid TV. I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. In this multi-part tutorial series, you are going to learn the basics of HTML starting in this video right here, continuing on to CSS, more CSS, and what you need to know to get started making websites. You do not need to watch these in order, but if you're new to web development, we're going to take you from start to finish. Before we get started, in the description of this video, you can find links to resources mentioned in this video. One I want to mention right now is the Mozilla Developer Network. The MDN website is an open sourced wiki of all things web. You can find out more about anything we talk about here by researching it on the MDN. Also, keep an eye in the top right corner of this video. I will often refer to other videos or resources that you can view by clicking on that little information icon. All right, so what is HTML? Every website starts by serving your web browser a document formatted in a language called HTML, which if curious stands for Hypertext Markup Language. We assemble our page with blocks of content in HTML. These blocks are called elements and our elements can contain nested elements. So what are these elements? Elements are made up of two tags, an opening tag and a closing tag, with the content in between. The type of element you use more or less describes what kind of content you are putting inside of it. If we want to create a paragraph of text, for example, we first create the opening paragraph tag, which is just the letter P inside of what I'll refer to as code brackets. Tags begin with a greater than sign and end with a less than sign, and the element name in between. Now the closing tag is the same thing, but we indicate that this is an ending to the last paragraph tag with a forward slash before the element name. Now write your paragraph in between and you have one full paragraph element. It's important to know the element that you use is important, but only for semantics. Remember that all elements are just blocks with different names. Let's actually take a look at how to build a website. You're going to need a text editor like Notepad on Windows or Text Edit on Mac, but preferably you should use a purpose-built code editor. And there's a lot of options out there and I'll cover a few you may want to check out in another video. In this series, I will be using Brackets, at least the start, and I recommend it for beginners. Brackets is a nice editor developed for the web by Adobe and is available for free and open source. Check the description for a link. The first thing we have to do in the first line of our code is declare that this is in fact an HTML document and this tells the web browser how to handle that document and what version of HTML you are using. We will be using the latest version of HTML, currently HTML5. As HTML5 is now a living standard and you will be and will be continuously updated, we have no need for a version number. Every single HTML document you write will always start with the following line: exclamation mark doc type in all caps followed by a space and HTML inside of code brackets. This may look like an HTML tag, but it's actually not in this case. It's just instructions to your web browser. Now then, the HTML document is structured like a tree or nested folders. The top of this tree is our root element. Well, that's confusing. We first create the HTML element. This HTML element contains all of our website code, and it is the outermost single element of our document that contains everything else. The reason for this has to do with something called the DOM, which is super important, but is too advanced to cover in this video. We'll get to it in another one. Now we have defined where our HTML code will go. There are two important elements that we need to add. Every HTML document has a head and a body. The body is where we are going to spend most of our time and it's where we write everything that we are physically seeing on our page. But there's information that won't be seen on our page, like the title of our website. The title is the text that you see at the top of your web browser or in the browser tab. It's also the text that's displayed on Google when you are searched. Inside of our head element, we will add a title element, which is where we will add the title text. Let's move on to the body for now. In the body, we put all of the elements that are displayed onto the page. There's a lot of them available and we won't be covering too many of them in this video, uh, so be sure to read the MDN. Let's start simple and give our website a heading. Currently, there are six levels of headings available in HTML. As this is the main heading of our page, we'll stick with H1 and write RoboSquid. Underneath, let's put a secondary heading and write About. Beneath that, we'll add a paragraph element with a brief message. Save your files as index.html. Make sure your document is being saved with the .html extension or else it won't open in a web browser. Create a project folder for our index.html file and put it in there. We will have more files related to our website in the future. 
Once done, go ahead and look at our website by opening it up in a browser. There's not much to look at, but then again, we didn't write much yet. Notice that the headings have been bolded and are larger than the paragraph text. These styles have been added automatically for us by the browser because of the elements that we used. Every element has a default styling applied to it by the browser. We'll come back to this later though. Let's add a picture. Below my paragraph, I'm going to insert a picture of our logo. The image tag is used to display images, but we have to specify where the picture is so it can be downloaded by the web browser and displayed on the page. Go back to our project folder and add a new folder to hold our images. I'll name mine IMG or image. And in there, I'm gonna place our picture. Mine is called logo.png. Back in our HTML, it's time to tell the image tag where the image is. We do this by adding an attribute. All elements can have attributes which hold extra information for us. In our image tag, there is a source attribute so we can add it like so. Type SRC equals and two quotation marks. Inside our quotations, we can write the relative path to the image, which for us is going to be forward slash image forward slash logo.png. The alt attribute is for alternative text in the event that the image doesn't load or isn't shown, and it's what's shown when you hover over an image. This is also often used by search engines to help understand what the picture is of. Now because the image element contains no text, it is one of the few self-closing tags that does not need a closing tag. It is common practice to add a forward slash at the end of the self-closing tag though. Save your page and reload your web browser. You should be able to see your image now. Let's also add a link to our website. Below our picture, we need to add an anchor tag. The anchor tag is about as old as HTML itself. It used to be used so that you can navigate up and down a page using anchor points, and you still can, but shortly after it was created, we realized we might want to navigate to other websites or pages, not just places on the current page. And for that, an attribute is used. href is where we put the link that we want to link to, very similar to source in the image element. Save your page again, and you'll see the link that when clicked, will take you to the website that you link to. Okay, before we move on, I just wanna go over a few tags and get them out of the way so that we can move on to something a little better. We already have gone over heading, paragraph, and image elements. Another common one is the UL element, which stands for unordered list. The UL element is a container for the LI element or list item element. Pairing these together will create a bulleted list and the OL element or ordered list will create a numbered list. When HTML5 was introduced, along with it came some great new elements that are important to go over. The nav element defines an area dedicated to navigation. Header defines the heading either of your page or of the section it's in. This may contain a heading element or a logo or something else. The main defines the main content area of your document. The side, this defines an area that is not specifically related to the rest of your page. Maybe this is a sidebar with links to your social media or an advertisement. Section, defines a separate section of your page, unique from any other section of your page. Uh, typically it has its own heading and own footer and so on and so forth. Article, this should define a document such as a forum post or a news article or a blog entry or so on. Footer, the element that creates the footer for the section it's inside of, either for the whole document or just a section. This should contain copyright information or information about the author, contact information, standard footer information. Lastly, I want to mention one more element that isn't new to HTML5, the div element. A div is a container that has no specific purpose or semantic meaning. It exists specifically to help us group our content and style it later. The div element is likely what we would have used instead of any of those new HTML5 elements we just went over, uh, but they didn't exist, so now they do. Now let's take a look at an example of an HTML document. This is what is referred to as a template or a boilerplate. This is generally how every HTML project should start, and there's a few things we haven't covered yet in here. First, you'll notice there's a new attribute added to the root HTML element. The lang attribute accepts a two-letter code referring to the language of the page that helps Google and other tools read your page. Inside the head, we see three new things. Two meta tags, which, as you might expect, define metadata for our website. First being our character set. UTF-8 is a set of characters available to be displayed on your website. UTF-8 is the default set of characters and isn't truly required for our site, but if someone from another country with a non-default character set visited our page, they might see some funky stuff. The next one may look even more strange, the one that has a name attribute of viewport. 
This line, though confusing, is crucial for your website working with different devices with different size and resolution screens. This line tells your web browser to scale your website appropriately based on the device it's on. Don't worry too much about what this line does if you're a beginner, but just make sure you include it. And lastly in the head, you see a link tag. The link tag instructs the browser to download external resources along with our page. In this case, it is with the relation of icon, and we use href to point to the location. This is for your favicon, the little icon that shows up in the top web browser tab. All right, we made a simple website, but it isn't very interesting. We didn't have a lot of color or good font, and everything is just kind of stacked on top of each other. Well, next we're going to learn how to style our HTML with CSS, but let's recap on what we've done real fast with a real example in brackets. All right, so we've seen a good overview of how to make a website, but we haven't done it practically in a real world example yet. So let's go ahead and get started. On your desktop, I would recommend creating a project folder or anywhere else on your computer. And inside is where we will be working. But before we do anything here, let's go ahead and open up our code editor. Like I said, in this tutorial, we will be using brackets and the download is in the description. Once you open up brackets, you're going to want to go to File, Open Folder, and select our project folder, which I already have here. And that will let brackets know that this is one project. From there, you'll want to go to File, New, and we will save this as index.html. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste in our boilerplate, and I'll explain this for you. On our first line, you can see here that we are declaring that the following is an HTML document, followed by our root HTML element. You can see it begins on the first line of our actual document, which is line three of the file, and ends on line 19, and everything in between is inside of the HTML element. And inside, of course, we have a head and a body. And inside the head, we see the two meta tags that we talked about earlier, as well as a title tag that says RoboSquid. Now let's move on to the body. Now in a real world example, you would probably have the navigation of your website at the top. So we'll start there by creating a nav element. And a navigation will probably contain a list of other pages that this website has to offer, such as home, about, and contact. So whenever we're talking about something as a list, we should automatically think to use the unordered list element. Of course, it could be an ordered list, although I do find that you will use that less often. Inside, we have an li element, and let's write our first page, which is home. And uh, if we want home to be clickable, we should probably put it inside of an anchor tag. So I will go ahead and do that and set our href equal to the pound sign or hashtag. And the reason for that is because the web browser will understand that if this hashtag or pound sign or whatever you want to call it is in here, that this link is inactive. It just doesn't do anything to the page. So it will more or less cause no effect. If you want to put in a web page there, such as Google, it will work. But in this uh, example, we're just going to do this. And you can see that brackets automatically closed or tagged for us. So I'm actually just going to take home, erase that, and put it inside our anchor tag. Okay, and what you would want to do is copy this uh, two or three more times, depending on how many pages you have, and you can go ahead and change these. So contact and uh, maybe about. Okay, so after our navigation, we'll probably have the main portion of our page. So of course, in HTML5, that means we will use the main element. And inside the main element of our page, we will probably have a heading. So I will use H1 and write Robo Squid TV. And underneath of that, we will put a paragraph tag and we will write, thank you, put a space in there. Thank you for watching. After that, we will add an image. So let's go ahead and start our image tag space. And we can see that uh, there is a list of things that we can use for attributes given to us. So let's go ahead and select the alt tag and we will put in logo. Now, we don't actually have a logo yet, so before we write anything else, let's go ahead and minimize this. Take a look at our project folder, and inside, let's create a new folder called image. I'll just name mine IMG. And inside that, we want to add our logo. So I'll go ahead and drag that inside. Let's go back into brackets. Now let's go ahead and add the source for our logo, so SRC equals. And you can see that brackets is automatically filling in the information for us. It sees that we have an image folder, so it has that selected. So let me go ahead and click that. 
and inside the image folder it was able to find logo.png so let me go ahead and click that and just like that our image is finished now let's go ahead and save our page file save and if we go into our project folder you will see that we now have an index.html with uh, some data inside of it. But I'm, I'm not gonna open this just because I wanna show you a neat feature of brackets. In brackets, if you look at this lightning bolt in the top right side, there is a live preview feature. Brackets will actually open up in an instance of Chrome and show you your website and any updates you make to your file will actually show up here immediately. So if I just split my screen here for a moment, you can see if I go ahead and change the H1 to something like, let's say, YouTube. First of all, while I select it, you can see on the page it reacted. But let me go ahead and type in YouTube, and you can see the changes taking place in real time on the right side. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about how we can use CSS to add styling and color and fonts and everything else that makes websites beautiful. So stick around, and uh, we'll get started on that next. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. If you've enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could give us a like and share this video to your friends. If you learned something and you wanna learn more, please be sure to hit subscribe below and see us in the next video.